lovely Flosstube friends, welcome back to the next episode. Deciding on your fabric for your new full coverage piece for a beginner. Where to start? It's a minefield, people. Utter, utter minefield. I'm gonna make it super easy for you. So, my first bit of advice that I will give anyone that is tackling their first full coverage piece, no matter how big or small it is, is there are materials out there that are designed to be to make the process super easy and that is something called easy guide or magic guide now there are people out there that have a preference of certain fabrics and you'll hear them saying oh well i grid my fabric i tried gridding fabric it took forever i didn't get on with it and then I found Easy Guide and I've never looked back. So bearing in mind that full coverage means you are covering all of the fabric. So there is no point in looking at all these pretty little fabrics because it's not gonna work for you because you're not going to see it. You've got choices, people. You've got lots of choices. Now, my personal experience was working with an 18 count Ada type of material. And I found that to be perfect for my, first, for my first go. Now, what you need to know about fabrics. So you've got Ada's. And Ada basically is a material that is different to an even weave. So let me see if I can show you the difference. So here's a piece that I've already stitched. Oh, upside down. This is an Ada, which has got blocks. So it's very big bits of fabric with little holes in, and those holes determine your squares. Even weave, on the other hand, is lots and lots of little holes. But the principle is exactly the same. So choosing your fabric is a little bit more tricky than you might think. My biggest bit of advice I can give to you is get some sample pieces, test stitch, test stitch, test stitch. Literally, all you're gonna do is you're gonna get a bit of fabric in an even weave and an Ada different sizes, the sizes you think you might want to go with, and you're going to test stitch. You're going to sit there and just do in one colour. doesn't need to be in a different colour. You can see here I've done it here. This is one colour. So you're going to test stitch on your fabrics to see, one, whether you like how it sits, and two, is there enough coverage? Is there enough thread to cover all of the fabric at the back? So just as where I came, you know, my viewpoint on it is, this piece here that I stitched, this is on an 18 count Ada. The squares are bigger because the holes are further apart. So on the Ada's, you've got a 14 count, a 16 count, an 18 count, and even a 20 count Ada. Which, for a true, true beginner, that's where I started. I started on an 18 count Ada and a 20 count Ada. Both of those you can get in Easy Grid or Easy Guide. So super, super easy. Now, stitching on an 18 or 20 count Ada, my suggestion would be that you use two strands of thread instead of one. At the point that you make the decision that actually you don't want to stitch on Ada because the only downside to the Ada is that I find that because the squares are quite big still, the real fine detail that you can get on some stitching, you don't get on Ada. So. Comparisons, people. Let me give you some comparisons. So, 
My Lovely Faces of Fury, my first ever project, is on an 18 count Ada. So let me see if I can, now if I bring that up, now you can see the little squares. That's on an 18 count. This one here, QS Grace Faces, she is on an 18 count Ada. Now, if you start looking at even weaves, which basically when you're doing full coverage, it's not something to panic about or worry about. So this is my 25 count even weave. Do you see how much smaller the detail is? It's a little harder to stitch on if you've got, you know, not particularly great eyesight. But if you're looking for something that's more delicate looking, then you need to go with a higher count even weave. But like I say, it's not for the faint hearted if you're a total beginner. If you have done some stitching in the past, obviously even when you've done even weave, it's not a problem. But even as a beginner, to work on even weave when you're doing a full coverage, it's super easy. For every hole that you've got, for every four little holes, in a square, you're going to fill them. Either an up stitch or a down stitch is going to go in one. Now, the decider is whichever you are most comfortable with. So, for the even weaves, you've got, well, the world's your oyster. The easy guide and magic guides in the even weaves starts at a 25 count, a 28 count, and I think a 32 count. Now, I've got a few projects that are on a 25 count. Now, the alternative reality that I just showed you is on a 25 count, one over one full cross. I have got projects that I'm working on a 28 count in a half cross, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna go there, people. So my suggestion to you is if you're thinking, you know, if you've seen any videos that sits there and says to you, oh, but you can do it so much faster if you do half stitch. or tent stitch. You've got one or two ways that it can be said. You've got tent stitch is half stitch. They're exactly the same. I've done both. In fact, I'm in the middle of one full cross, one over one on a 25 count even weave. And I'm also, excuse me, I'm also doing a 28 count two over one half cross on a 28 count. Even I am still struggling doing the tent stitch because you don't actually feel the full square. So if you're new to this, you're new to full coverage, which if you're watching this video, I suspect you are, do full cross. Don't try and think, oh, well, it will get done faster if I do tent stitch or half stitch, so I'll go that route. That route is not an easy route to go if, you, if this is your first time. If you're a virgin at this, trust me, you want to go full cross. Now, like I say, if you go with an Ada, whether that be a 14 count, a 16 count, an 18 count, or a 20 count Ada, you're going to do a full cross, but you're also going to need either three or two strands of floss for every square. The minute you move from a 20 count Ada up to a 25 count, my suggestion would be 25 and 28 count in full cross, you will use one strand of thread. One strand of thread, full cross, is a perfect coverage. You don't get lots of, you don't get the material showing through from the back, it's a perfect coverage. So that is just my take on it. If you don't trust me or you're still unsure, of course, check out my other video where I show you the actual differences on my stitching. Also, go do some research. If you, if you want to, research it. Go look at other floss tube videos. There are lots of videos about the differences between the even weaves and the aiders and how the stitches look. Because it is all very much personal preference. But like I say, I cannot stress enough. The most important thing that you need to do is test stitch. So if you're not sure or you think, oh yeah, I can, I can do that. Do yourself a favour, go and get yourself a small little bit of even weave. Get yourself a bit of Ada 
and just do a 10 by 10 block because you're going to need to work out what coverage you're looking for because all of this is personal preference what coverage you're looking for in the actual threads so when you're stitching depending on your tension and depending on what you like some people like it full and fluffy so that you know it's it is full and fluffy like that some people like it much more delicate you know they, they don't want it all big and fluffy they, they want a nice delicate appearance so like I say test stitch most most important and another reason that I say test stitch is for some people you think oh right okay yeah well 25 count you know one over one that sounds perfect for me and then you start stitching it and you've either got a different tension to someone else or or what you thought you liked actually when you've got a full 10 by 10 filled in it's actually harder to get the threads and the fabric in so you're like ah didn't think it was going to be this tricky maybe i should have gone up a size so that's why we say test stitch i personally my my personal suggestion to anyone who is completely new never done this before by far would be either go with an 18 count ADA or a 20 count ADA. It just makes things so much easier as a total beginner. But that's not to say that if you like the finer look, you want it much more, you know, delicate detail, then my suggestion would be go with a 25 count even weave. Don't go any higher than that because it's, it is harder. It's harder on your eyes, it's harder to see. But because it is a full cross that you're doing in a 10 by 10 block, you can see if you miss a square. So there we go. There is my take on what you're going to need to know about your aiders and even weaves. Now, as to where to purchase the easy guide or easy count, there's two different brands that I'm aware of. Here in the UK, my go-to place is Lakeside Needlecrafts. Put it down here. They do a big range and she also supplies a sample of different aiders and different even weaves. So if you look on her website, there is a place where you can order sample sizes so that you can do a bit of test stitching. So super helpful. In the US, I have no idea. Um, I would have thought somewhere like one, two, three stitch. They might do sample sizes or you can go to your local LNS and see if you can pick up some fabric there so that you can just do some test stitching. So there we go, that is your fabric choice so that you can make a good decision of what you're going to use. Now, so one thing that you need to decide when, when you're making the decision of what fabric you're going to use, you also need to decide how many strands of floss you want to use. Now obviously, heaven and earth design when they, when they give you your chart, like I showed you, um, they say on here that it contains 89 colours. Now, the thread count or the amount of skeins of floss that I need to purchase for this pattern particular is based on a 25 count fabric. So always be aware that in this corner over here, it is telling you that you need to look at your chart based on a 25 count fabric so if you are using an 18 can ada for instance and you're going to use two strands then you may need more or less floss for it so just bear that in mind so when deciding on our fabric please bear in mind some things to know needs to know there is the ADA and then there is an even weave. If you're going with the ADA and I'm talking 14 count, 16 count, 18 count, 20 count, you're like, Teresa, I have no idea what you're talking about. Just so you know, 14 count has bigger holes. 16 count has slightly smaller holes. 18 count, even smaller holes. 20 count, smaller again. So although the numbers are going up, the size of your square is going down and the same applies with the even weave when we're talking even weaves and people are saying to you it's a 25 count it's a 28 count it's a 32 count 
I'm not going to go into the technical jar jargon of, in actual fact, that's how many that's how many threads in the fabric per one inch. You don't need to know all that. So with the even weave, the same rule applies. The higher the number, the smaller the holes. So if you went with a 32 count, which I would never suggest you do, if you went with a 32 count, it would be teeny weeny, incy bincy, teeny weeny. If you go with the 25 count, it will be bigger. Therefore, making it a little easier for you, one, to be able to see what you're doing, and two, you'll still have delicate stitches, but just not as big as the aiders. So when we're talking aiders and even weaves, you're talking about how big the square will be when you have finished your cross. So if you've gone with an ADA, say an 18 or a 20 count ADA, your little square, when you've actually stitched it in, in floss, will look a lot bigger than it does on the 25 count. But then if you stitch it on the 25 count, that little square, even though it's smaller than it is on the ADA, compared to a 28 count even weave, it will look bigger because the 28 count is smaller. So like I say, the higher the number, the smaller the, the square that's stitched. Okay, we've got that out of the way. Whew. That was hard work explaining that, I have to be honest. <laughs> so part of your decision of what fabric you're going to stitch on also ties into how many strands of floss you want to use. Now, when I say floss, I mean your embroidery floss, your DMC embroidery floss that you're going to use. Here it is, hanging. So, depending on what fabric you use will depend on whether you go with one strand of floss or two strands of floss. Now, in that decision, you also need to decide how you're going to start your floss in the project. So a single strand of floss either needs to be woven to the back of the existing stitching and then you start stitching with it. Or you can do two strands of floss which has got something called a loop method. I'll input a video here to show you. As you can see, I mean. we are sat here in front of my really ugly looking bit of this this is the old project, but I need to use this fabric for something, so this is ideal. When we are working with test stitching, so I'm sitting there telling you to test stitch and you don't even know what you're doing. So I'm basically going to show you how we do this. So when you're measuring your thread out, I will go further into detail into this when we actually get to the, the thread section. But what you actually will do is if you are working with a single strand of floss, you will grab the end of the floss, measure it to your elbow like so, and that is where you will cut cut it off of the skein, skein being like a, a main amount. That is a single strand. If you're working with what's known as a loop method and you're working with two strands, you don't cut two strands of the same length and then attach them. You do what's known as a loop method. It's exactly the same. You basically double the length. So you'll get the floss in your hand, measure it to your elbow, grab that bit, measure it again, that will be two strands because you're actually going to fold it in half. So then to get your strand of floss, because it comes in a six strands, so you give it a little tap on the end which will separate, where's the camera, that's it, it will separate all of the ends. You just grab one little end, hold the rest of it in your hand, it will bunch up but if you gently pull it, your strand will come out and it will leave you with the rest all intact. If you try and separate them as in pull them apart, you will end up in a really, really hot mess. So here is our single strand. So we will thread our needle. Now on a full coverage piece, there are a number of different ways of starting a thread. I had to start my threads differently to most. So for demonstration purposes, I'm going to do a waist knot. You can actually start a thread like this on a full coverage. There's no reason why you can't. So basically, 
your waist knot will just go a certain distance away from where you're actually going to start. So you'll put your waist knot, say, there. Then say, for instance, we're going to start, hmm, where are we stitching? Um, let's go over there. So when you're doing a single strand, the way you do a cross on an ADA is you come, I, I always start in my bottom left corner. Everyone's got a different preference. For demonstration purposes, I'll do it as I do it. And if you don't like that way, you can always do it the other way around. But basically I come up in my left bottom hole. I go up into the top right of the hole next to it. Let me see if I can zoom you in a bit. Let's move this down so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so as you can see, this is my thread coming up. This is my needle going down. That is my first half across. Now, in full coverage, we don't need to just do single stitches. So we don't need to finish that, finish that cross as you would, which would be bottom right to top left. That is your cross. Now, because we're doing full coverage and we're doing some test stitching, we can do all the bottom half or bottom legs first. So starting again in the bottom left to top right. And we're just gonna keep repeating, bottom left to top right. You can see now why the ADAR is actually very easy to work on because you can easily see the holes and you can easily work on it. So we're going to whiz across because we need to do this test stitch. So we've got one, two, three, four, five. We want five more because we're going to pretend that this is a gridded bit of fabric. One, two, three, There's five. Right, so now we're going to go back and we're going to finish our crosses. So that this is now becoming a full cross. So this here, as soon as we do that, is our full cross. Now, if you can see already from there, although I'm doing this, I can see lots of white behind my cross because we're doing one strand of floss on an 18 count ADA. So because the square is as big as it is, there's not enough floss to actually cover all areas of this square. But it is only one strand of floss. It's much easier to work with because it's a single strand. So there is our full cross. So I'm just gonna whiz along and do the next row. I'll probably speed this up for you so that you don't have to sit here and watch this. But again, you're starting in your bottom left corner, going up to your top right corner, and you're just gonna repeat. So it's repeat, repeat, repeat. We're going to do exactly the same thing for the bottom leg of the second row. Okay, so that is all the bottom leg of the second row. And now we're going to go up in the bottom right corner going up to the top left corner to finish that stitch, which will now complete the full cross of each one of those squares. I'm sorry if you can hear stuff in the background. The back door is open because it's quite warm today, but the neighbors have got their nephew and niece round and they're playing in the garden. <laughs> 
it's always quite nice to sit and listen to kids play. Okay, so there we go. That is a single strand full cross on an 18 count Ada. Now, if I zoom you in, you can see white through there, can't you? I know I can. So if I can, I know you can. So now we're gonna do a comparison like we have up here with two strands. Now, the two strands is where it's, the advantage is you get to do the loop, loop start method. So like I said, you're gonna have a length of floss that is twice the length of a single floss. We'll go over this, like I said. And again, we give it a little tap on the end to separate our threads. And then we grab one. Don't try to pull them apart. Keep it in your fingers and just let it, you just pull that one end gently and it'll all just ravel up in your hand. Super easy, job done. So now we have a longer piece of thread that we're gonna work with. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get both ends together so I've got the two ends in one, one end and I've got a loop at the other end. And the bit that I'm going to thread through the needle is the two open ends so that there's a loop at the other end. So we're going to thread our needle. So I threaded the needle. Let me zoom you out so that you can see. And as you can see, I've got the loop this end and my two open ends are together this end. So now, zoom you back in. So we're gonna start sort of underneath comparatively so that you can see it. So again, I'm gonna start in my top right-hand corner and push my needle down. Now, take note now that I've got a loop up here I want to keep this loop up here. Whilst this loop is up here, I want to bring my needle up in the bottom left hand corner as if I'm starting a stitch. So it's down here. And we're going to pull until we start seeing that loop move. Then we're going to stick our needle through the loop. So we're going to catch the loop like this. And then we're going to pull. And then I go back down the hole, which will be leg one. That thread's now anchored. It's not going anywhere. So now we can just start with our bottom leg of every cross. And again, we're going to do 10 across. So that's three. Four. And you can already see how much more coverage you get on an 18 count Ada with two strands of floss. It's much, much darker, it's much, much deeper and much fuller. So we're going to whiz our way across here. Like so. That'll be hubby ringing, best hurry up. Okay, so we're at the end of row one. So now we're gonna come back, starting in the bottom right corner, going up to the top left corner of every one, which will now create our full cross. So as you can see, we have a nice thick amount of floss fill in the gaps. Which is sort of what you're looking for. You're looking for a thickness that's not too thick that you actually struggle to get your needle and the floss through the hole. 
or that it becomes too bulky but you do want it to basically make sure that it covers the entirety of the square so that you don't see any of that white fabric through. That's the goal. Okay, so now we're gonna come down in the bottom left corner as if we're starting a new stitch. And we're gonna go up to the top right. Let me just unwavel this a little. So we're gonna go, oop top right and again we're just gonna do all our bad bottom stitches again and you can already see the difference in the coverage on an 18 count so this is why I was saying to you that on an, if, you've, if you've already made the decision that you don't really want to go down the even weave road, road and that you just would prefer to stay with the Ada, then you're going to be looking at sort of an 18 count Ada or a 20 count Ada. Bearing in mind 20 count Ada is slightly smaller than this, um, which is totally fine. The 18 count and 20 count I would say is a good choice to go with in an easy guide. If you know you're going to do that and you're going down the Ada route then you know that you're going to need two strands of floss to get the right amount of coverage because one strand on a count that's that when we say that high, it basically means that because it's such big spaces that the floss has got to fill, you do need to have your two strands to cover the fabric. But a lot of people like two strands because you can do the loop method start, which is a lot simpler too. Okay, so there we go. So that is your comparison with just me stitching it, showing you one, how to do a test stitch. Bearing in mind, I've only actually done two lines. My suggestion would be do a 10 by 10 block for each of your test stitches, because that way you'll be able to tell for sure. And you can see, as soon as I move this back, that is a nice full cover of the fabric. The one above it, you can still see a lot of the white in there. The color isn't as deep. I would find that disappointing. So just as a comparison, I've already stitched on, um, I done some test stitching on one of my other pieces on the 25 count. So on the 25 count, I've used one, one strand of floss. So if I put this next to it, it might give you a little comparison of the size of stitching we're looking at. So this here is a 25 count even weave stitched with one strand full cross. So if you look at the size of this, these little bumps against these little bumps, you can see that the 25 count is much smaller and the 18 count is much bigger. So again, it's dependent on one, whether you really do want to do a loop start method so that you, that way you always start your thread with the loop on the front, which obviously you can't do with this method with the 25 count one over one. But if you do prefer the smaller, the smaller squares which will actually make the piece more aligned to the size that it says on the chart from Heather and Nerf Designs then the 25 count even weave is the way to go but that's a comparison that I'm just showing you quickly I still suggest that you make sure you do your own test stitching on sample fabrics because it's all very well and good saying well I like this I like this nice small delicate look but you need to be able to stitch it yourself. So my suggestion is get some 18 or 20 count Ada, get some even weave if you're even thinking about it 
and test stitch a 10 by 10 block on each fabric just to be sure that you're actually going to be okay to stitch on it. So I hope this video actually helps. Now a lot of people go with two strands of thread because they think that the starting of the thread is so much easier. I sort of agree. If you're going with an Ada, for sure you're going to need two strands of thread anyway because one strand of thread will not give you enough coverage so that you can't see the fabric behind. So if your decision is there's no way you're not, you're not touching even weave, not for your first ever project, you're sticking with the Ada, then you're going to need two strands of floss regardless. So your decision is already decided. So then you can just test stitch two strands of floss on a 14 count, 16 count, 18 count, 20 count Ada, whichever is your preference. I personally, if you're looking to get something that's got detail sort of similar to this, where it's got that type of detail, if you're looking for that, my suggestion would be go with either an 18 count Ada or a 20 count Ada in an easy guide. When I say easy guide, the reason we know it's easy guide is because as you can see, it has a grid already printed onto the fabric. All of these fabrics are printed. So the count, the counting is just took out the equation. You know once you put number one stitch in, you can see what, if, if, if your stitch looks like it's about to go outside the box, you're in the wrong place. Because you're gonna do this 10 by 10 blocks and each one of these little squares is in a 10 by 10 block. That said, I need to put this out there. Be careful, people. If you do, if you're brave, like really silly brave, and decide that you're gonna go with the 25 count even weave, and you go with the, the magic guide, you'll see here, this has got a grid on it. Be careful when you're purchasing this fabric, because those squares that are gridded into the fabric for me, are not a 10 by 10 square. They're a 20 by 20 square. So make sure that when you're purchasing your easy guide fabric for the 25 count, that you are actually getting something that is gridded in 10 by 10 and not gridded in 20 by 20. I personally don't like to count to 20. I can count to 20, believe it or not, but not when I'm stitching. Don't ask me why. So just make sure, so for instance, that was a 25 count that you just looked at there and that was gridded 20 by 20. This here is a 25 count that's gridded in 10 by 10. And this here is a 28 count even weave that is gridded in 10 by 10. So there we go. So we know about the gridding, what you need to look for, you need to make your decision, and you need to do a spot of test stitching. Like I say, if you've if you've gone with an Ada, you're gonna be doing two strands. So just make sure that you like your coverage. When we say coverage, we're talking about once you've done a 10 by 10 block, so that's 10 stitches across, 10 stitches down, 10 stitches across, 10 stitches up. You fill it all in. Look at that little block and see whether it's fluffy enough for you. Make sure that your coverage is covering all of the fabric underneath so that you're gonna be happy, so that once your stitching is done, you are not gonna see any of the white of the actual material that's behind. That's, that's your goal. But then you don't want something that's got so much floss in there or it's, it's got so much thread in there that it's just too bulky. Some people don't like it too bulky. So like I say, most important thing, test stitch. So once you've done your test stitching, we will come back and then decide how we're going to get our project up. So I'll see you next time. Bye bye for now.